What's up, family? All right, so we have a Muslim professor and a Christian student and a war of words about theology. <laughs> All right, y'all know this is not going to end well. But it goes like this, folks. A Muslim professor at a small Florida college has resigned after a bitter dispute with a Christian student which included theological dust-ups, angry emails, a police report, a suspension for the student, and a reversal of the suspension, all of which made national headlines. The professor, Ari Zafari, won a 20-year-old sophomore Marshall Poston out of her Middle Eastern Humanities class at Rollins College after doing battle with him for most of the spring semester. Poston accused her of saying Jesus' crucifixion is a hoax and that his disciples didn't believe in God. <laughs> but that wasn't the only issue. In an email to Zafari, after receiving a failing grade on an essay, Poston wrote, you report me to the dean for correcting you while you were indoctrinating students with false information. On the other hand, a Muslim student in class cracks a joke about chopping someone's body parts off and you do nothing. The controversy spread beyond the private liberal arts school in Winter Park, which received thousands of angry messages about the professor from Donald Trump supporters. <laughs> it don't say that, but you know they were Donald Trump supporters. All right, so the school's professor, Grant Cornwell, told the Orlando Senator that Zafari quit because of the hateful threats and email and phone messages she was receiving. I think it's a terrible injustice, but I do respect her decision. In addition, Cornwell told the paper that Poston's suspension in late March, which was rescinded after a week, wasn't over his theological dispute with Safari, but because of his vulgar and demeaning spirited Facebook comments to another student. The president added to the senator that since Polston's post didn't constitute a specific threat, he was reinstated. However, Polston's reinstatement letter from Rollins College says, College says his behavior was connected to more than just a single student, noting that he had been aggressive, disrespectful, and at times vulgar in multiple verbal and electronic communications with faculty, staff, and students. Polston's attorney Kenneth Lewis told the Senator the Facebook post was nothing and a total joke and that the classroom dispute was the real reason for the client suspension. Before post and suspension, Zafari sought an injunction against him for protection against stalking, the paper said, citing court records, but she withdrew the injunction request last week. Cornwell added to the Senator that school officials interviewed other students in Safari's class who disputed Poston's allegations and that the school decided his failing grade was appropriate after reviewing Poston's essay. I was upset, understandably, Poston told Central Florida Post about the failing grade. I've never gotten anything less than straight A's. So I was really interested in figuring out how to possibly improve or at least understand the grade. Okay, Post, and I'll tell you how to improve and understand the grade. Stop harassing the damn teacher. You see, I, uh, I had the privilege of watching this dude do an interview. He did an interview with a, a local news station, and you could just see the pompous just pouring out of his skin. The dude was real arrogant. He had that attitude like, you know, the guy asked him something and he was like, well, first of all, let's get something straight. I mean, who the hell starts off an a interview like that? You know, the dude, and then he had in the background, he had a, <laughs> he had an American flag in the background and some other things going on in the back trying to look patriotic. The dude just came off to me as really, really phony. Then he cited some uh, information about him going overseas into the Middle East and helping some poor people and all that kind of stuff. He showed some pictures of him with little poor kids and all that kind of stuff. 
And for a minute, I was trying to like feel it for a minute, but then I said, no, man, that's too many people saying this dude ain't a good person. We talking about, they said he had trouble with faculty, uh, staff, and the students. Now that's too many damn people against one person. Now, you know, his ass was really ha likely in the wrong for him to be white, the, pre the president of the school to be white, and the professor to be a, a Muslim, and the professor take, I mean, the uh, president takes the professor's side. I'm going to tell you what happened. The only reason they rescinded that suspension is because of the pressure they got from the public. And folks started making them phone calls. Patriots was calling. How dare you? She need to be fired. We want her job. You know, we should pass a law. We need to get Congress to pass a law that Muslims can, cannot teach in American schools. They're, they're poisoning our kids with this Muslim rhetoric and these talk of our law and all this stuff. See, that's what they were saying. I can guarantee you. I know you know how I know that's what they were saying? Because I read a whole lot of comments online and they were talking just like that. Get her out of there. She needs to be hung. She shouldn't be teaching our kids. Now, when I read the article, I looked into it. It seemed like to me just a, a regular debate. You know, you say he was crucified. I say he wasn't. So, you know, I thought that this was higher education. This is where people, great minds come together and they debate and they agree to disagree. But apparently, if you disagree that Jesus rose and he was resurrected, you're going down. So she disagreed. I mean, she committed the cardinal sin. She spoke ill of Christianity. And really, in America, saying something like Jesus wasn't crucified, man, that's blasphemy. I mean, somebody had to die for our sins. Man, if you don't believe that, man, what's, what's the use of living? <laughs> man, these people believe Jesus died for our sins. And if you don't believe that, something's wrong with you. So that's the way it is in America. When in Rome, you do as the Romans. This is America. So you do as Americans. You can only get so far. But Muslims, Muslim challenging, you know, Islam uh, challenging um, Christianity in America on a collegiate level, you need to get out of here. <laughs> that ain't going to happen. That's not going to happen. It's not going to work. Not here. Not in this time. No way possible. It's not going to work. Not going to work at all. There was a time when, you know, a person could uh, could go to jail for saying something against Christ. You know, that's blasphemy, man. But I, I got to thinking with all of that stuff, you know, with all of the, you know, the, the, the fighting and pushing and disputing and all that stuff, you know, between the professor and the student. I got to thinking, I was like, you know what? What if a Christian professor had told a Muslim student that there was no Allah? Would the reaction have been the same? Would the Christian professor have been ran out of town? Would that Christian professor had gotten death threats, stalked, called everything but a child of God? Would that Christian professor still be on the job? 
I think everybody know the answer to that. And it is an emphatic yes. Yes, that Christian professor would still be at work. And no, that Christian professor would not have received debt threats. So, coming up with that answer got me to thinking again. So now I'm thinking, why is it that if you don't agree with certain people's ideology, and from, in many cases, these people claim to be sane individuals. They claim to be the good people. They claim to be patriots and barriers of the Constitution, uh, uphold the Constitution by any means and respect the land, respect the law and all of this stuff. But when it's not in their favor, uh, they ready to burn, they ready to burn the town down. Hell, they ready to burn the country up. So it's a clear double standard, uh, a double standard that I would not have put past uh, you know, any type of situation like this going on in America. Now, both sides are based on beliefs, if you really think about it. it it's, based, it's based on faith and beliefs, not provable facts. Think about it. No matter what you believe, it's, it's all about what, what do you believe in? What do you believe? I believe this exist you believe it doesn't exist can either one of us prove beyond a shadow of doubt not what we think not what we was taught but can we prove that what we believe is true is factual and if we can't believe what we can't prove what we believe is factual, then we should by all means respect anybody who disagree with our beliefs. Because it's just a belief. And what makes your belief any greater than my belief? The only time any of us think, uh, it, the only time any of us approve of someone else's beliefs is when we share those beliefs. And that's a problem. But hey, you know how it go, man. We here to try to work it out. What else we gonna do? No more talk.